we got the, the media mogul on the line right now. I just watched her movie, Wendy Williams, the movie. Um, it's, hey. airing, it's airing Saturday, though, on Lifetime at 8 p.m., but let's get her on because I found out a lot by watching her movie about her and her family, uh, and I want to say congratulations to her. She's somebody I really admire. I love her work. She's carved her own path. She's a person in power. She's a woman in charge. We got the one and only Wendy Williams on the line with us, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Wendy! Hi, Sway. Wendy! Hi, Heather. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mike. Hey, hi, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. So you, did you really watch the movie, or are you just saying that for air? Hey, Wendy, I didn't even we know. We really watched it. Let, yeah. Let, let, no, hold on. Let me, you, want me to, you want me to prove it? <laughs> it? It was some things I found out that I, I didn't even know about you. I didn't know your... Um, what you went through as a child in terms of the image shaming and, and the pressure right. you got about your weight. I know you wrote about it and you talk about it, but seeing it um, play out in some of the scenarios, even the musical chairs and well, people haven't <laughs> seen the movie. I don't want to give up too much of the movie, mm -hmm. but uh, seeing mm -hmm. it played out, it just kind of gave me a more depth in depth look on, on your journey and, and how you came to be who you are. And then surviving all the things you survived, I mean, you got really vulnerable in there, as you always do. But just when you see the date rape, you know, play out, when you see the abuse play out on, on camera, that visual kind of gives you a little more, you know, a, a little more empathy uh, for the person. And um, Thank you. You know, you know um, and, and you and I uh, know our music, so you know uh, Sherrick. And that happened, and I never shared it with anybody. Mm -hmm. I wrote about it in my book, but seeing it on TV – is a whole different thing. And, and Sierra played that to the T. We became friends behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So she would call me or I would call her. She'd be in the set. I wasn't able to go to Canada because of the quarantining. Uh, and she'd say, okay, Wendy, tomorrow is the date rape with um, the R&B singer. And um, they don't want me to say his name. I said, why not? His name is Sherrick. You're too young to know, but look that up when we get off the phone. His name is Sherrick. And he looked like a DeBarge. And he's about six feet five. And he's dead now. So, you know, that, but, but you know, act the part and, and just do what I tell you to make it a better scene. As opposed to a girl screaming and calling the cops. I wasn't that girl. I wasn't embarrassed by it, but it was a lesson in life. And I knew that I had to go home and take a shower, Heather, and wash all that mess off of me and get in my car and drive to New York the next day because that was at the cusp of me working. I was working in New York on the weekends and working in D.C. full time for Kathy Hughes during the week. And I knew I was about to get something full time in New York. I could just feel it in my bones. Nobody promised it to me, but I knew I worked hard. You know, I also knew that I loved to party, and I would just take my party on the road with me, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I think you do. <laughs> well, well, you, 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 we. I saw a lot of cocaine in the movie too, Wendy. I, I, that, right. that took me off. I saw a lot of cocaine in the movie, boy. I was like, was it like that? <laughs> well, yeah. there was a, there were a lot of drugs back in that day, and um, and for me, that was my company up and down the road. My company in the apartment. It became better company than my friends who do not understand the the radio life that I lived, the life of a public figure. And then to get even deeper into it, they didn't understand. They un they understood the coke. It's not like I had regular people uh, who I called friends who didn't know coke, but they didn't have the money for you know an eight ball. <laughs> every, yeah, every other day, game. every other day, <laughs> every other day. Damn. Mm. Yep. So, uh, so I do it myself. And then, you know, as broadcasters, we don't want bronchitis. We don't want, uh, we don't want uh, a deviated septum. We don't want nosebleeds. So I learned how to cook it. Uh, it. It was as good to me as Heather B. Salmon. She makes a mean salmon. Yeah, she got a busy. She got a busy salmon. <laughs> I, I, I can vouch for that. <laughs> if I, if well, I and, crazy. and so I, you know, I'm not proud of that, but that was a very necessary phase in my life to make me the woman I am today, sitting high atop New York City, looking at the Hudson River and, and looking Ooh. at, uh, I, you know, my, my actual show just went off and I like to watch myself on Ew. TV. So because I pinch myself and I look around and my mm. cats are staring at me and I'm eating a honey bun, a real honey bun with lots of butter. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um and and it's such a normal life that I've lived all of uh -huh. my life, but not normal at all. So, 
and and when Kevin enters the picture, and I know you all have seen him in person and us interact with each other, it was all fake on my part. Heather, as a woman, maybe sometimes you saw the pain or the disdain in my eyes, or you saw me just follow his lead. And as a man, Sway, you probably said, that's a good woman. Look at her follow his lead. No, I was following uh, his lead out the door because I knew I had a two o'clock with a divorce attorney. Okay. Oh, okay. Or but, or a three o'clock call with the private eye to give me more money on his many uh, women and his uh, and his lifestyle. Uh-huh. I needed all my receipts before breaking free, and it it took twenty years to do it because every year that I was behind the mic. Um, Every year I got better financially and also invaluable to my employers. And so, and I loved where my career was going. My personal life, I couldn't let go of that because I knew that I would have to pay Kevin alimony. And I knew that I did not want to walk away and live in just a one bedroom apartment, you know, with no closet space and no dishwasher, Mm -hmm. you know, and I knew that I was not going to, you know, pillage young Kevin's college fund to pay for uh, you know, uh, Kelvin's mistakes. And I, 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 there were certain things that I knew. And I also knew that I would have to have the courage to share my own hot topic on hot topics because he's the one who made our family hot with TMZ, uh, following him around, taking pictures of he and Sharina Hudson, getting in and out of the cars I've paid for, getting in and out of, you, you know, the doors of the condos and the houses that him having a job where he's able to go into a bank and secure loans because I set him up with that kind of lifestyle, just by virtue of him being the executive producer of the Wendy Williams show. That, that meant a lot going Mm -hmm. into banks to the bank officers and, and just signing off. And, you know, (laughs) sometimes he would call me while sitting in front of bank officers and say, um, Wendy, I'm sitting here with blah, blah, blah. And he's a blah, blah, blah. You know, this bank. And, and he watches your show every day. His wife loves you. Look, say hi. Hi. hi um, so on and so forth. What's Kevin doing? Oh, I'll tell you about it when I get home. You know, I'll talk to you later. Click. And the phone would hang up. And my day would be busy and I'd know he'd be up to whatever. And I would call the bank officer myself and I would use my charm to get information that Really, the officer, by law, I don't think is supposed to share with me, but I would get it all. I would smile. I would show him bye. You know, Heather, how we do. Hey, Wendy. (laughs) Wendy, (laughs) let me me ask you this. And then one day I got to ask the two, Heather and Wendy, about their growing up in Jersey. Um, What I didn't understand, and I think it kind of you bringing clarity to it, is – in the movie, and I don't know if it talked about all the infidelity, but it was a lot of infidelity in the movie, <laughs> right? And <laughs> and you kept taking, you kept allowing yourself to be back in that situation. Why? Because I wanted to make sure my son was good. You know, when you have an only child, um, he did not have any siblings to laugh with, cry with, or huddle in the corner with. It was only him. You know, when you're a Wendy Williams, it's not exactly like you're living in a hood raising him. You know, he was the only black kid or one of the few and certainly the only one whose mom was on TV every day in all white neighborhoods with a nice house and housekeepers and, you know, people cooking for him and cooking for us. And and there he is calling me on the phone, probably asking, oh, there he is. And let me ignore him for now, my boy. (laughs) Um, But I say that was him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, that was that was my son calling from oh, Florida. But look, okay. I stayed because my love for my son and my love for vengeful, my vengeful thoughts for what my husband was doing right under my nose were more important than my own happiness at that particular time. I knew I would get my happiness back and I knew I would get it back in a big way. Look at that, a boat on the Hudson River, and I'm looking at the Colgate clock. Heather, you know where I am. I know exactly <laughs> where you are, girl. I love it. I yeah, but, like you know, you also... I, I, I sacrifice. And, uh, and I guess a takeaway moment for men and women is watch how many children you have because kids are expensive. Watch how many babies, fathers, and mothers you have because the more you have, the more complicated um, breaking away from the relationship is. And also... I didn't want to be that girl to call my mother and father and cry and say, you know, 
I'm going over to Lisa's house. I'm divorcing Kevin. I'm going to sleep on her couch. I'm going to sleep in her bedroom because I don't need a girlfriend's uninformed shoulder to cry on. I don't need to be patted on my forehead and be told, Wendy, you should take a week off. You could stay here. Here's an set, extra set of keys. My kid loves your kids. And you, no, I don't want any of that. And I'll get back to you too. And if you still want to be my friend, then you'd be my friend under new terms. Now you need to take it or leave it. Cause I know my greatness and I know my worth. I am worth a better love life. I am worth a better friendship circle and I am worth, well, you're always worth a better uh, paycheck. Yeah, there it is. Wendy Williams, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you know, um, well, the reason why I kept Mike on, because in the movie, what I also, you know, we, I've worked in radio for um, three decades now. And Go so, ahead and stunt. Oh, well, it's just a little bit. Um, but I've been through so many different contracts, but I didn't realize or uh, know how to negotiate properly, especially as a broadcaster, probably till maybe the eighth or ninth year. Um, yeah. that, I, that I realized how much money was being made off of me. What was that like for you, you know, learning how to ask for your value and then some? Well, I mean, that, that still happens even in TV. Yeah. You know, a, a, being a woman, being black, uh, being mm -hmm. attract the way I present myself, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not exactly wearing a pantsuit walking into the office with my knuckles dragging on the floor. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And people mistake my, my pretty charm for a get over and they've gotten over a bit, but I've gotten over too. You know, it's not about having all the money in the world. It's about having an e equal balance of money and happiness and the ability to sleep and live with yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, Kevin, uh, as a manager, he was the negotiator and I was the brains behind the operation because I knew what I should be getting negotiated. I knew how many, uh, what bonuses I need for the day parts. I, you know, I, I score big in and, and I, I knew, um, you know, I get more money for the 25 to 54 as I got older in years than I did for the 18 to 34. I got more money for the women than I did the men. Ooh, I got more money because I was engaging white people in, in urban radio or TV. Uh -huh. I mean, they would love that. And Kevin didn't know about that. All he knew about is money, money, money. And he was good at that, but he would raise his voice. He would wear his sunglasses. He would, he wouldn't put out his cigar. He would walk out of meetings. He would slam doors and then he would come home and tell me F them N words. We <laughs> going to do what we want to do. And that was my, that was my want because that's how I was born. Mm -hmm. I was the little girl who broke the chair at a birthday party where I wasn't supposed to win, but I did. But, but it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And I, you know, baby or no baby affairs or no affairs. I was with Kev for four years of dating and 21 years of marriage, and I've outgrown him in every way. I've outgrown him, his, his, his financial wants and what he thought was important, the direction in which to raise our son, the direction in which how to treat people around you, whether they're the boss or whether they're scrubbing your floor. Are you out of your mind? Why do you talk to people like that? And when he's good, he's real good. But... Mm -hmm he could change the temperature of the room in the blink of an eye. What, what was it? If, when he watches this, what is he going to think? Cause this is through your lens. He's probably going to regret the day he ever met me. It was, it, it's the, it's the Kev part. Is that part the the vengefulness that you mentioned earlier? Um, you know, cause he got a lot of play in this movie. Yep. Well, you know. I mean, the, the, but the movie was about my life and it was about my life. Unfortunately, because when you work with your husband, when he's your manager, he's your executive producer and he's your husband and the father of your child, there is no separation. Mm -hmm. So he was in the movie a lot because he was at the TV show. You know, he set the temperature for how an entire staff of, you know, you know, a lot of people behaved they would look down when he would come around they would call him kev or he would grunt and they would just say good morning sir or they wouldn't say anything they would avoid him because he was not a nice person to them with me they always called me boss they always called me queen they always say good morning wendy and i would always have you know at christmas time you know there'd be you know something special nothing big that would cost a lot of money but we would exchange gifts and 
you know, if one could cook, you know, a great dish from their country and they cooked it that night for their family, they would bring in leftovers for me. And, you know, but whenever Kevin saw me, um, you know, having a good time with the people working around, whether it was the radio and now TV, 12 years I put up with this crap. Um, he would quickly tell me, go, you know, what are you doing out here? You know, the show has been over for hours. Go home. You don't need to be here. What you talking to them about? You know what? Go in your office, change your clothes and go home and co- close up your robe. Really? And then he would stay out there because I would close the door, but leave it just pulled to. So yep. that's old pool. So yep, you know what pulled two is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why she do that, Mike? That's old school. Sway, you know what that is. Uh, well, listen, Wendy, I, I'm going to tell you what I walked away. And, you know, um, I just, you know, seeing your story and knowing who you are and what you've accomplished and even through that, through the marriage and even the first marriage, which you felt like wasn't important enough to go into the story. <laughs> you know, all of yeah. those different things accumulatively is who who you became. And that's the bigger picture. I, I'm not dismissing the Kev experience. That's your experience. But Man, I was just amazed of how you made it through it all. And now you're sitting out overlooking the Hudson, you know. Yeah, I, I did have a, a dud date, though, last night. So, you know. You had a date? Me for that. <laughs> you had I, a oh, dud. I had a date you last night. Date. Yeah, we went up to, Well, you know, one of the dates from my app. You know, I'm dating in several different lanes. I, we have the dating game, which, you know, February is a, a very important month when you're in media. And uh, all month long, we were playing the dating game. We've played it on our show before, but this time I'm single. So the bachelors are sending in their 30 second reasons on, on video, send it into my show. Uh, go to wendyshow.com for details on why it is that you think that you'd like to date Wendy or put up with Wendy for a date or, you know, whatever. But I'm very serious. I can't wait to fall in love. And I would like to get married one day. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I you, would. You, and and I love it, love. Huh? And you know what? I need companionship. That's what's up. Like of a man. I need that. But I don't need him in my business on 26th Street where my business is. is and I don't need him in my apartment thinking he's going to live here. And I don't want to live with him. But I love you. Wendy Williams, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Give a big round of applause. <laughs> I kept Mike on because we were talking about the executive orders that President Biden signed today, and we start getting into a conversation about housing and generational wealth. Um, yes. And, and, um, and what I learned about you, too, is that your parents did fairly well, I'm assuming, because of the neighborhoods you lived in and the, the way the house looked on the show. Um, you've done extremely well um, in your career and acquired a lot of assets. Uh, what are your thoughts on generational wealth and and, and yeah, what is what is your thoughts on generational wealth, especially in the black community, and how we could get more generational wealth minded? Well, the movie house wasn't nearly as nice as the house in the neighborhood that I grew up in. I have, I have to be honest with you, but really? you know that's TV. Everything isn't exact, but my story is on point. Mm-hmm. Generational wealth is very important. My parents have nothing to leave me, um, but that's not their problem. They provided for us. My sister, brother, and I have wanted for nothing. Me. I want to leave Kev with Kevin is an heir. Kevin has a trust fund and Kevin knows this. Kevin knows increments will be given out to him according to his age. And Kevin also knows the estate planner. Kevin knows this guy by name and cell phone number and knows the firm. Kevin knows that he will not be able to touch that money unless uh, it, there has to be two signatures, the, the estate planning firm and him. Kevin also knows uh, what, and you know what? He's still messing up because he's 20. He's got a yep. bit of his father in him in that way. But, you know, I try to pull him to the light and let him realize one thing that he's learned is that babies cost a lot. He knows he costs a lot. He doesn't, he wants to have just one child <laughs> and he wants to mm-hmm. have that child um, somewhere. He says, my around 37 years old, I want to start looking at women that I'd like to marry. So I want to date for the purpose of, a, f- a real future. Right now, I just want to have fun. I've learned a lot from you and my dad. I'm like, that's right. That's right, honey. Um, yeah, in terms yeah. of generational wealth, I started saving for Kevin, and this is something that anybody can do. In the second you find out that you're pregnant, don't do anything until that baby is delivered because something horrible can happen, and then, you're at, then your money is trapped in something that never came to fruition. But you open up 
um, that uh, that uh, little savings account for college or future education. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. open up, um, you get yourself a life insurance policy. You don't need life insur- insurance if it's only you or if it's just some guy you're living with. The difference between marriage and just living with somebody, and I don't care how many kids you have, is a lot. You know, yeah. the law makes it's it. a whole lot. I like that little piece of paper. I don't need it anymore, though. Marriage is not for everyone. You know, generational wealth is about not buying, um, you know, all good art. But, you know, have, having those secret key pieces, having a, owning a piece of Kinde Wale that you can give to mm. young Kev and he can give to his kids. You know, owning, Jeez. you know, yeah. a Shaka Khan original that you got for your 50th birthday that is priceless. That, mm. you know, is, will look perfect on your wall when I'm not here because I won't be here forever. You know, own, just, you know owning Costa Boda, but only the black figurines. Not a lot of money. Yeah. Like, they will tug at his heart. He can pass them along to his children. I believe in things as generational wealth as well as actual money and stocks and buildings and stuff. My grandfather, I heard Mike talking, you know, my mother grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, That town right now is a disaster. It was kind of a disaster then, but I didn't realize it. You know, that was considered me going to the hood when I went to visit my grandparents. And my grandfather owned almost the whole block. Everybody knew Mr. Skinner. And and my, my grandfather was the type to give people a break on their rent if they couldn't pay it right away. And my his dwellings were like multifamily dwellings all up and down the block, right next to Route 1. If you shop um, the old Dapper Dan's or, or um, Mr. Dapp or whatever <laughs> it was called in the dollar store and stuff on that strip, all of a sudden the government yeah. of New Jersey, and this is way back in the 70s, wanted to rip up Route 1 and put some really luxurious high rises and businesses mm-hmm. in that area and they had to they wanted to uh buy up the properties on the streets attached to Route 1 and my grandfather's mm-hmm. street was one of those streets well oh, my wow. grandfather was very good friends with the mayor of Elizabeth and and my grandfather, even though that was his friend, he would turn real greasy, you know, and, and fight city hall and then break bread and drink beer with them at night. You know, that's how, that's how real friendship is to me, but people don't get that these days. You know, you got to be able to F somebody yeah. up during the day and, 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 but right, my grandfather never sold that. out. And, and then my parents, my parents realized that they were not uh, able um, to, uh, they were not able to be as shrewd um, by owning these apartments and collecting rent and everything and keeping up with um, the various tenants. So they decided to give into city hall and whatever happened, happened, you know, they bulldozed some of the block, not the whole block route one and nine to me still looks like it did when I was a kid. I guess the money got mm-hmm. split between the government of, of the city, which it often does. You ever notice how states yeah. and cities will get, you know, millions of dollars for this and millions of dollars for that, but it never trickles down to what it was promised for. To the hood, yeah. yeah, that's what True. you're talking about. Wendy Williams, let me let me do this, Wendy, and because I'm loving this, but I know we all got to go. And But I made a promise to someone a long time ago that I would introduce you to her because her granddaughter wouldn't. And I'm talking about Heather's grandmother. Oh. Uh, and I'm like her third boyfriend, I think, in line. And, and, and I, I got her on the line. I'm like her third boyfriend, she Wendy. Is. She's on the line right now. How you doing? Hey, Are you Wendy. The- it's nice to meet That's you. That's why you're talking to Wendy. Wendy, I love your show, Wendy. I love it. I love it. Even though I'm a senior citizen, I like the fashion. I like the fact that we have a shoe size that the little petite women don't have, but you used to wear the nice shoes before you had to wear those sneakers. And I like the fact that you give good advice to we we women that have these men that you know we have problems with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wendy, um, if my husband wasn't so old, I shouldn't wasn't a senior citizen, I should say, and he wasn't so sick, I would ask your advice with, with me with him because I would leave him. 
I'm not too so old. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Mrs. Ma. D, they say through sickness and through health, you're a better woman than me. I don't know how. Uh, I'm just glad there was no sick involved. <laughs> but how old is your grandfather? How, how old is your grandfather, HB? A hundred. A hundred. Wow. He's a hundred, and I'm I can't leave a hundred year old man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She 90 and he's 100. And she talk about leaving her, Wendy. This is what I deal with, Wendy. <laughs> wow, that's some kind of life. Well, you know, you know, I, you know, I can only be me. And I appreciate that I um, have some popularity in the senior um, community. Uh, I am a mess. It was uh, created in part by me, but I love men, Mrs. B. So I'll be back. Yeah. I'm back in the game now, and I will keep you updated as to who eventually uh, the next one will be that grabs my heart. <laughs> okay. Wendy, um, uh, Heather's my probably told you that I'm in, I'm in a, um, a, well, it's like a nursing home. Um, because of my, my health. Rehabilitation center, Ma. Rehab. Mm -hmm. I'm just excited to, to, to talk to Wendy. You know, <laughs> you know I love her so much. <laughs> well, and, uh, but your I'm age, you're still your going to be living someplace where people wait on you hand and foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wendy, don't go off the show. I heard a rumor yesterday on one of the talk shows that you're going <laughs> to oh, give it up. Mercury's not replacing me. <laughs> Where are they going to find another? I love my bosses. They put it's the uh, documentary, and, and they talk very, very honestly about who I am and how I am. When they found me, I was a mess. They hired me. They wanted all the mess. They got the mess, and they loved me for it. Well, you know what life is. is all about. That's the thing I love about. Well, I'm learning you know every day. But love, uh, uh, I love you, and... I try to see you every day, even though I'm in, I'm here. Thank you. We'll we'll Ma, tell okay, the whole we you, Ma, uh, community and... there. I said, "How you doing?" How <laughs> you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you later. Okay, baby. Okay, thank you for for letting me speak to Wendy. D don't tell okay, me, I did don't, that. Don't that wasn't Heather. I want my credit. Oh, Bernie is uh, Bernie is Kelvining me. He's bossing me around and telling me to get off my phone. New management alert. Bernie is giving me the screw face. Okay. He's telling me to get off the phone. Yeah. I'm being bossed okay, around. Okay, Wendy. <laughs> we love you. Take care, Wendy. We appreciate you. And make sure y'all watch the movie on Thank Lifetime you, Saturday at 8 p.m. Okay.